So, uh, hello. Welcome to the Arduino Boy instructional assembly video thing where we put together a kit from uh, Shiwi Electronics. So, this is the bag you'll get in the mail, and it's got everything you need. And there's this nice little pull tab where you just pull it across here, and the whole thing opens up nice and neat for you. And you just empty everything out. You've got things uh, all documented on on the instruction manual that you can print off from the internet. But the first thing you have is the uh, the link cable, and some of them I've already stripped. I'll notice on this one that there's no white stripe on it, and that's that's in the manual. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, <coughs> the next thing is the, the PCB. The uh, what are these things called? Like IC. The IC sockets. Uh, the at Mega chip with the Arduino Boy software flash to it. The 6N138 chip, which is a opto isolator for MIDI signals, and the 16 megahertz crystal to control the speed of the program. Uh, the next thing is the hardware bag, and these are all the connectors that you'll be using to, uh, you know, interface your Game Boy with you know, your computer, or your electronic DJ software, or hardware. There's a 2.1 millimeter power supply jack. Uh, I'm not going to open it. And there's a push button, some MIDI jacks, and a 6-pin DIN connector that goes well with this, this thing right here. Uh, and finally, there's a bag of electrical components that uh, we'll, we'll use to populate the PCB, and that's what this video will be about. We'll just like put all the parts on the PCB, and then I'll make another video about how to connect all of these things to it, and maybe later I'll show you how I make my enclosures. Um, so yeah, lots of videos. Um, the one thing that you're gonna want is the instruction manual. That's a little bit vague, but it's vague because I've created this like video series to show you how to construct the Arduino Boy, um, and like, like, really want to stress that this is a kit for more advanced designers and builders, mostly because I don't have time in my day to answer questions about how to solder, and the, making your own enclosure for this device is going to be like relatively difficult, so you're going to have to know what you're doing and how to like drill holes and how to, you know, use screws to mount them on the case. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty tough. I'm working on a, a mod that will allow you to put the whole PCB inside the compartment, uh, the battery compartment of the original Game Boy. So that way you can just, you know, power the Game Boy using the small little jack on the side. This one I'm, I'm modding right now, I'm going to put in like a bigger, a bigger jack because I don't have a small jack and I had big jacks lying around. Okay, so this is the welcome page where I basically ask you to make sure that you know what you're doing when you're buying this, and not to, you know, dig yourself into a grave that you can't get out of, but yeah, advanced builders only, no, no novices, no beginners, uh, yeah, this page is, you don't really need it, don't print this out, don't print this out, save a tree. Up next is the, uh, the contents page, where I talk about, you know, the brain bag and the component bag, hardware bag, and, you know, the link cable. I just want to point out this is the, the DMG connector for the original Game Boy, and this one's for Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket. Um, I mean, I'm going to make another video about how to make Game Boy SP cables, or how to just make your own cable using a multimeter. Um, these are all color mapped, and the instructions are the instructions match the colors right here. So the first thing that we're going to do, because we're going to be focusing on the, the PCB, uh, the PCB populating the circuit board, is that I'm just going to get rid of the hardware bag and get rid of the link cable, because we're not going to need it in this video, and I'm just going to open these, open this up. And stuff out here too. Notice that the LED mounts are in here, we're not going to it's a very small. Um, I'm building a, a three millimeter blue LED, 
Arduino boy, and uh, the LEDs will, you know, indicate what setting you're on, whether it's LSDJ or Nano Loop or MGB. Is there another one? You can use like a keyboard thing for LSDJ. That's that's pretty weird. Um, yeah, so this is all. This is this is what we're gonna be using in this video. I've got my soldering iron over there. You can't see it, but it's going. And mostly gonna be using like this wire stripper and these like little, little pin pinchy things. So the first thing that's like you know really helpful is I'm just gonna fold this piece of paper over and use my resistor guide so that I don't have to like. You know, waste my time figuring out what every resistor is. So this one, let's see, it's got three red bands, so it's a 2.2. Get this really flat. 2.2, another 2.2, 2.2K. Um, each, depending on what color you get of LEDs, you'll get a different set of resistors. And it took a lot of time just to make sure that you know. When you plugged in your Arduino boy, the uh, the lights won't be too bright and you burn your eyes out or something, because the LEDs can get really bright. So this one's red, black, brown, that's 1K. This one is yellow, purple, red, oh, it's 4.7K. Let's see, we got a uh, red, red, brown, 220. Red, red, brown again. And this blue one, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the actual color in the kits that you'll be receiving in the mail, but the blue one I know is 2K. And I think that's about it. This is a diode. I think I need one more 2.2. This is just a quick little demo kit that I put together. Looks like I missed something, so we'll just put that one right there. And then all this stuff can go off to the side. Let's start heating up my iron little thing right here, uh, and then we'll get to the see what's next. So I hope everyone's populated a PCB before, and there's like a, a good way of going about it, and the best way is to you know, start with the resistors, the resistors and the, the crystal because they're all about the same height, so when you flip them over on their back, you know, it's not going to be that hard to, um, the, the surface will be even, it'll be easy to solder. We can do the diode next, the IC sockets, followed by the capacitors, and then finally the 78L05 voltage regulator. And that that sounds fun. So my iron's going, I've got my resistors sorted, and I'm just gonna start, you know, putting these guys in. The first thing I like to do is just, you know, bend them all before I put them in, so I'll just do that super fast. No, go away. Okay, great. Yep. And now, now I'm just gonna you know, keep doing this. And if you're watching this video and you're thinking, gosh, this is gonna take forever. No, it's, it's pretty short. So I look at my board. Um, you'll notice this slot right here. Where's my camera? There. Um, it's got this 1K slash question mark. Those are the LED resistors. Um, and for the most part, in most kits you get a 1K resistor, but in this one I'm using 2.2 because the blue LEDs came off a bit too bright. You know, if you're like playing a show and it's really dark, these bright LEDs will really just burn into your burn rate into your skull. Yeah, so. There's one little trick I'm going to show you right now that's going to save save you a lot of time. That you're just going to want to, or save you a lot of troubleshooting a problem in the future. So take your thumb, put it over all the resistors. You know, try and get them, you know, straight, pointing straight up, and then push down one side. And don't push down all the way because it'll be hard to clip later. And then this other, you're going to push it in the same direction. Usually, what you do is you push, you know, that way. But in this case, you'll notice that these, like, IC... I need something to point with. You'll notice that these these points that connect to the Atmega are really close to here, and 
I, this is stupid of me, but there's no connection right here. These are separate. These are on different, different paths. So now that I've got those in, I'm just going to snip them off. Let's see. Snip, snip, snip. It's the right position. Ooh. Let's see you in hell, leads. Actually, you know, this is... You guys get really good at making circuit boards. You're just going to figure out a, not even be doing this anymore. Hopefully you're just, like, getting boards printed and doing other neat stuff, or maybe SM, SMD, SMT, whatever, soldering. But these little leads, if you don't clean up afterwards, they'll end up on your floor. If they're on your floor, they'll end up in your foot. So, I mean, I always like to consider myself, like, relatively clean, or, like, relatively, relatively, uh, you know, neat and tidy when I make electronics, compared to some of the things I've seen on the internet. Um, but they, they still get me. So this is our two-point, oh, let's see the G20 ohm, so... The board's all labeled right here. It says 220, so you're going to want to put the 220 resistor in there. Put this down. Take the other one, because there are two points on the board with 220. Just, uh, ah, nervous. Slide it in. Do the same thing. Push them up, push it away from... from the... from the IC. And then the other 220 is right here underneath the diode, and you're going to want to push that one away in the opposite direction. So we're just pushing it right over there. And this stuff's kind of small, I'm using the camera on my iPad. Not the best camera, actually it's pretty good, but... If you press the leads down too far, they're going to be kind of difficult to snip later. Yeah, this one's giving me some trouble. Okay, there we go. So what's next? The 4.7K? Um, the 4.7K resistors, if you know what you're doing, uh, you probably don't need to be watching this video, but <laughs> the 4.7K is like a, a limiting resistor that Game Boy Genius, he runs like a blog and does some of the coolest you know, Game Boy mods imaginable. He's like in the coding and the hardware side of it, and he noticed that if you're have if you're powering your Arduino boy using the Game Boy itself and not a separate separate uh, power supply, that you'll get some drop notes. Oh, this is we're on the 270 ohm resistor that goes right next to the 6N138. Um, so he found out you just put that little resistor. In. And you can check out his website. Maybe I'll put a link down in the, the YouTube description. Um, so yeah, if you do if you do decide to power your Game Boy from uh, from the power your power your Arduino boy from the Game Boy, that that little resistor is gonna save you a headache later. That's why it's there. Okay, sorry camera's right here. I can't even see the screen. Don't know what's going on. Alright, 2.2 kilo ohm. It's blue. Yours might be this color. Red, black, red. Yeah, I'm just going to put that one in. Push the leads away from the IC. Give them a quick snip. Or a slow snip because, you know, I'm not all that fast at this stuff. And making Arduino boys takes takes a while. Um, I could solder this right here on the table, but I use Helpy Hands because it just, I don't know, gives me, gives me a lot more room, feel a lot better working with it, so there we are. Yeah, let's go here. Here's my iron. It's a nice one. It's a Weller WES-51, and to anyone who's like a hobbyist, you're, you're never going to regret spending a hundred bucks on a good soldering iron. It's just going to save you so much time. It's, like, it's a beautiful tool. Okay, what temperature are we at? I like I like to use uh, six, 650 degrees. It's a, like, it's a bit, it's a bit hot, but it lets the solder flow really well to the other side, so let's do this. And that was great. 
Yeah, that'll do. Um, never soldered on screen before, so excuse me. Excuse me if I'm nervous. I'm a bit nervous. Um, I think that's really important when you're soldering is uh, you're gonna want some kind some kind of exhaust system uh, to draw the the fumes away from you because otherwise if you uh, if you solder a lot um, you according to the state of California which it says on this uh, spool of solder that uh, it will cause asthma and you know generally generally you won't feel too great in your chest after breathing in a whole bunch of solder fumes. So just, I mean, I use a window fan, I don't, I sit right next to the window when I solder and it's on exhaust. The breeze is blowing today, so the smoke's actually going towards me. Not everything can be perfect. Um, yeah, for the most part, you don't need to buy one of those big, those big mean fans that are like 50 bucks from Jamico, or now sir, stuff's for chumps, or professionals. Solder, solder, solder. How's that look? Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna do the right or left side of the board, the other side of the board. It's the grass greener over here. Yeah. I really hope someone ends up like watching this video in real time and tries to tries to race me, and then they publish their own video, and next thing you know, like, the whole thing goes viral. It's a competition to see who can build Arduino boys faster. That'd be great, because then people would have to buy kits from me, so... Someone out there should start, you know, start a race to build Arduino boys. Yeah, so all the resistors are on there. It could, it could look better at the top. Ideally... Where are we? Okay. Can we get this close? Is that in focus? Um, ideally, oh, that one's bad. Let's drain that one. Nah, I'm screwing this up. Nope, this is bad. Oh god, oh, mistakes. Snakes in front of the world. Okay, this is me just being a jerk. There, that's fine. This is fine. You're not gonna have any connection problems. It's all, it's all digital. So what's next? What are we doing? Okay. The diode. Small little diode. Hey, the diode goes right beneath the 6N138 and you slide it in. Push the leads away from the IC. I don't think that one's that big of a deal. Let's... <laughs> tools flying everywhere. So that's fine. That's fine. The diode is heat sensitive, so don't don't spend all day there. It's good. All things going in there. Yep. Great. You're great. You're doing a great job. Alright, so up next is the IC sockets. Um, do yourself a favor and note where the, the circle is at the end of the IC, because you're going to want to put that in the same way. You know, just remind you when the time comes that uh, you should put your chip in that way, because if you put it in backwards, you could, uh, you could damage it, you could break it, you'd have to write me an email, ask for another, and then I'd have to be like, ah, oh, and then shipping would be really expensive. Okay, so the way I put I see sockets in is I do one tip up or one point in one corner and then in the opposite corner I do another one. And now the the IC is stuck in place, it's not going anywhere, and that will let me put it up into the helpy hands. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the socket for the the opto isolator so that your MIDI in information gets in. Uh, if you're if you're making a MIDI 
a solely MIDI out device and an Arduino boy, you don't you don't even need this chip. Just throw it away. Or make a necklace out of it. Sell it on Etsy or something. Yeah. Okay, so now we're just this is easy. This is really easy. You just run down the line. There's nothing to damage, it's just plastic and metal. So like just solder really fast. Super fast. This where you train. Train on speed. Yeah, I really like I really like these solder pads. There's like a, a lot of room for your iron to fit and it heats the whole thing up. Really, really easy to work with. I don't know if anyone does uh, PCB layouts or PCB design, but the uh, they're actually shaped this way for like a, a very practical reason, not just for convenient soldering. And that's to um, let very thin traces go between... Oh no... Okay, that one's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, to let small uh, traces on the board go between the, between the points. So otherwise you're gonna have to, like, you know, squeeze them through. If you make them really small, maybe you could get two through. Yeah. PCB design's really fun. Um, there are a lot of cheap, a lot of cheap uh, manufacturers out there. What are they called? Publishers. And it's not something that's uh, reserved just to like elite and professional electronics designers. Um, there's a great service from OSH Park, and if you just Google them, they've got a really, really simple system. They charge by the square inch, and it's like a, a pretty decent price. I think it's like, how much is it? I guess it's like three bucks or four bucks per square inch. And you have to, you always have to buy in batches of three. So when I buy our tweet, when I was prototyping these boards, I would buy a batch of three for probably you know twelve bucks because they're so small. Um, so I'd really recommend anyone, anyone who's interested in electronics, to also you know start. Start exploring Eagle, because it's a great software. Um, if you're used to the Adobe Suite, you're going to want to pull your hair out, because there aren't really a lot of hotkeys, and some things are stupid, and... <laughs> but it's not that bad. Okay, so the, the IC sockets are in. That's great. Oh, I forgot to do the, the crystal. So the crystal goes right here. Put it in. Put it right there. Bend the leads a little bit so it doesn't fall out. Always, when, when you bend the leads, make sure you've got pressure on the other side to make sure that, uh, you know, you don't bend the leads and the parts like hanging out over here. You just press it flush with the board and press down on the leads. And snip them away. Boom. Okay. Like a quick little zip, zip, zip it up, skip it up. Okay. Yep, I am happy. I am happy. So, the next thing that isn't in the instructions, but if you're advanced, you should know, is that the longer lead on a capacitor, let me just get this up, can, it's gonna work, so you notice that there's a white side right here, and then the rest is black. The white side is the ground side, and the longer side is the anode. And the way I always remember it is that the longer lead always wants the power more, so it reaches for it, and that's helped me out. Um, in the case on my board, I've got a minus side to indicate that the, the ground, the shorter pin, should go in that hole. And uh, this other one is a square to show you. Usually when this square, it means it means anode. So I'm going to put the capacitor in here, bend the leads away, and I think I'll, I think I'll be able to get away with getting the other capacitors in here too without snipping already. So yeah, let's bend them that way and that way. Just like spread. Uh, the, the leads on the, the 22 Pico Farad um, capacitors are really small, so I think I might I think I might solder them first and then snip the leads, which is, oh no, don't do that. No, it's, we'll be fine.
It's not the end of the world. Uh, okay. Right there. So that's in place. We're going, doing good. Everything's going fine. I haven't run out of things to talk about yet. But I'll have to... Maybe I'll have to edit out some of the weird sounds I've made. I'll just, like, make them when there's a mistake. Scream. Whoa! Oh. Watch the video. Realize the sound doesn't... No sound came through and I'll have to reshoot the whole thing. Ugh. Don't ever start your own electronics business unless you really know what you're doing. It's the only advice I have for you. I do. I, I know what I'm doing. It's not that crazy. All right, all the capacitors are in. Woo! Um, and now it's time for the uh, the final. This is the voltage regulator. Um, this isn't a necessary component. Well, it is actually. You're gonna need. You're gonna put it in. But you know, if you had a five volt power supply. Uh, you would be fine. Like, for instance, if you were to power this using the Game Boy, which supplies 5 volts to the board, you you, base, you wouldn't need the voltage regulator, but when you plug your, you know, your wall wart, let me get one this thing, called a wall wart, you know, plug it into the wall, this one shoots out 9 volts, and 9 volts is too much for the, uh, the Atmega chip, so what this little guy does is basically, you know, Crunch, crunch the voltage down. I think it can supply like a hundred, a hundred milliamps of power. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe it's one. No, it's probably a hundred. That's enough for basically any electronics project you're gonna, you're gonna be doing. I mean, like any electronics project, with just like a few, a few ICs. Nothing special. Just, just hobbyist stuff. Great, so I'm just gonna snip these leads away. And this is this isn't the right way. There isn't one way to put together electronics. I mean there's a best way, there's like the best way. Um, and I do some of those, but uh, you know, there are other ways. And be free, you know, put the leads any direction you want. Uh, yeah, let me just get rid of this big, ugly solder, solder bulb. Actually, I should stop before I do anything stupid. Yeah, let's stop. Yeah, so this is this is where we're going to stop the boards completely populated, and then I'm going to make another video, and that will tell you how to put all these little things on. Woo! Okay, so thanks for watching, and now I'm going to touch my screen to turn off my camera.